My wife Lisa and I have been living soul to soul for over 20 years. To be precise, we celebrated our 24th anniversary half a year ago. On that occasion, our 21-year-old daughter, who had recently gotten married, gave us a new, modern television, and even our youngest son, Mark, chipped in. Mark, at the age of 17, earns money online in addition to his studies. I wouldn't call our family wealthy, but we've always had enough money. I earned a decent income, and my wife, a journalist by profession, occasionally went on business trips to other cities, bringing in some extra income for the family. Of course, I wished she didn't have to work at all, but she loved writing articles and meeting new people so much that she didn't want to quit her job. I was the one who initiated her employment at her last job, since my longtime close friend holds a high position at the magazine where Lisa currently works. All in all, I was happy until a certain moment. One night, I don't remember exactly, it was a month or two ago, Lisa told me she was going to a neighboring town to interview some rock star who was coming to perform. I was a little disappointed because I wanted to spend the next evening with her alone. However, she was so enthusiastic about her plans for the upcoming trip that I just smiled, kissed my dear wife, and wished her success and a safe trip. Three days later she returned. There was something strange about her behavior. I asked her several times if everything was all right, if she had been able to carry out her plans, and how the interview had gone. To all my questions, she smiled a little nervously and said everything was fine. My questions were exhausted, but something was still bothering me. Inside, I felt like crocodiles were scratching at my soul, and as it turned out, not without reason. Soon my friend called me, the same friend who had helped my beloved wife get her job. Arnold invited me to a bar, and I gladly accepted. It had been a while since we had shared a beer together. At the appointed time and place, we met and started talking about random things, but it got worse from there. After two beers, Arnold began a monologue with the words, My friend, I have something to tell you, but promise me to keep your composure. I became alert, but nodded. Arnold told me something I couldn't even imagine in my worst nightmares. On her last business trip, Lisa cheated on me by getting drunk during an interview with a rock star. Arnold said he heard about it from the group's concert director who called and rudely asked that the journalist not be sent again. According to him, she nearly ruined the concert. Arnold tried to defend her, but the concert director sent him a video from the dressing room. It was this video that Arnold showed me. I wish I had never seen that footage. There was no limit to my anger, hurt and resentment. My beloved wife, barely able to stand, was engaged in such debauchery with the entire band in the dressing room. She was screaming, demanding more, asking who was next, saying she needed a real stud. I couldn't believe my shy wife was capable of such behavior, but the video left no doubt. All the patrons in the bar started paying attention to us because the loud moaning and screaming was clearly audible from the phone. One of the patrons even asked to see the recording, but was harshly rebuffed. I couldn't bear to watch the whole video. When I got home, Lisa naturally noticed my condition. She understood everything herself and was almost on her knees begging me for forgiveness and trying to explain herself. I was in so much pain. How could I forgive such a thing? We used to be so happy. I didn't respond to her pleas for forgiveness. I just left the apartment in silence. That night, I went to my daughter's house. They had two rooms, so I didn't inconvenience them. I spent the next day in a daze. I don't remember how I filled out reports at work, how I got there, or how I got home. I got home late and my whole family was waiting for me. My daughter and son commented on the sincerity 
of their mother's repentance. Lisa added that she would quit her job and vowed to prove to me that she deeply regretted her mistake and couldn't forgive herself. She pleaded with me not to divorce her. I listened to her in silence and I was even grateful that my children had the wisdom not to lose their warm feelings for me as a father and for Lisa as a mother. But I couldn't forgive my wife. The image of that unfortunate video continued to haunt me. I understood that I would never be able to share a bed with her again. I hope that the children will never see the recording in which their mother appears as a completely different woman.